well, in our Easter service, I raised this huge uh, issue of doubt, uh, didn't I? Now, I, I, I recognize that it's complex and I recognize that it's contentious, which is why I wanted to uh, produce uh, this short series of videos, just a few minutes each, beginning to unpack the question of doubt a little bit more fully, think a little bit more uh, deeply about it. Um, you see, it's quite trendy at the moment, I think, to to consider doubt to be a positive and constructive spiritual experience. I have to be honest, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, I think Bunyan was onto something when he pictured doubt as a castle, a mighty fortress that kind of imprisons you. Uh, and, uh, you know, Christian and hopeful spend their time in Doubting Castle in, in a dungeon being tortured by giant despair and, and actually coming to the point of contemplating suicide. I, I, I don't think that the, the church has historically understood doubt to be a constructive and positive experience. Like I said in the service, I, I think that doubt is generally quite paralyzing and quite toxic. Um, and that as a general rule, healthy Christian spiritual experience isn't one that is plagued by or overshadowed by the reality of doubt. I mean, think about it like this. In the new creation, I don't think we're going to be wandering around thinking, gosh, I'm not sure what I believe, or I don't know if I think that God is good or loving or, or kind or compassionate. You know, there's, there's not going to be much doubt around uh, in the new creation. And, and so I think that uh, reflecting on that, it's something that we should be looking to... Uh, looking to navigate out of in terms of our spiritual experience on our pilgrimage towards the new creation. Uh, yes, Jesus was merciful. He was gentle with Thomas. Jesus is gentle with sinners. But he did. He was also very firm. He, wa he wanted Thomas to stop doubting and to start believing, to move beyond doubt uh, into uh, assurance and confidence and security and we get the same picture of the ministry of the holy spirit in romans chapter 8 where we're told that the spirit is bearing witness with our spirit that we are in fact the children of god god does not want us to be people who are plagued by doubt and insecurity um, now like i said there are some important qualifications around this doubt is a complex Phenomena, and there are all, there are different kinds of doubt, and I just want to unpack those a little bit uh, in in these videos and explore their relationship with sin, and and to ask the question how we can help one another as it were move past them. Now there are situations, uh, and maybe you can testify to this yourself, where periods of doubt have been um, a, a, an important step along the way. Of growth as a Christian. Now, I think we need to acknowledge that, but I don't think we need to move from that to say that doubt is something that is, is good in and of itself. I think God can redeem our experience of doubt, and He can use it to forge a stronger and deeper faith with, within us. I think that's different from saying that doubt itself is, is a good thing. Um, Another qualification is that I think we need to recognize that doubt is actually an incredibly common experience. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to discover on the day of the Lord that actually every single Christian has gone through periods of agonizing doubt and uncertainty about uh, what they believe and about their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I don't want to say it's intrinsic, that it's a necessary part of Christian experience, but I do think that given that we're still uh, living in this fallen and sinful existence, um, that, that there is a certain inevitability about doubt, uh, as there is about so many of the patterns of sin that continue to plague us. And, and let's recognize as well that doubt is, is a phenomenally destabilizing experience. It, it strikes at the very heart of, of, of the things that are most important to us, the things that define us. That it strikes at the heart of our relationship with God, at the very foundation on which we have built our whole lives. And so when we doubt our relationship with God, or when we doubt the character of God, or even sometimes the existence of God, 
um, we are doubting something that is at the very root of who we are, and, and that is going to be painful, and it is going to be disorienting. And, and the temptation is to try to avoid it, to try to hide it away, to bury it, to, to do something that means I don't have to confront this. But I'm going to suggest in these videos that that's not the way that as Christians, or indeed as a church, we should deal with the issue of doubt. I think we do need to say, though, that as we grow as Christians, as we mature as Christians, that at least certain kinds of doubt should become less of a, a problem for us. Spiritual growth, or to put it another way, growth in faith, includes our ability to grow in, the, in, our, in our capacity to trust who our Heavenly Father is. To rely on His goodness, to rely on His grace, to rely on His reality. You know, over the years, as we grow as Christians, we, we will have discovered time and time again just how faithful our God is. And like any relationship, that should build a kind of bank of trust and security and confidence and, and assurance. And so as we grow and as that experience of God's faithfulness and trustworthiness grows with us, th then actually I do think that there are, like I said, there are certain kinds of doubt that should become less of an issue. But it remains a common Christian experience. And all of us will have gone through times of agonizing, crippling, devastating doubt. I would say it's very unlikely that you will get through your life as a Christian without having to navigate this at some level. But let me just say this as I bring this first video to a close. Um, doubt is not the opposite of belief. I think sometimes we can think of, you know, here is, here is unbelief, uh, here is belief, and doubt is sort of somewhere wavering uh, between the two in, in the middle. I, I don't think that's the way to think about doubt at all. Right? Doubt is something that belongs firmly within the category of belief. You don't doubt something that you don't believe in the first place. Okay? Uh, doubt can look over to unbelief sometimes. But to doubt something, you have to already be committed to believing it. You see, doubting the truth of Jesus is something that only happens to Christians. You see that following the resurrection. The Pharisees and the soldiers who were guarding the tomb, they, they never doubt the resurrection. They just flat out don't believe it's happened or refuse to acknowledge that it has happened. It's the disciples, it's those who are already following Jesus who we see struggling with doubt, struggling to believe what Jesus has them. Now, if you want to see this really worked out in some detail, there's a great sermon by an old Welsh preacher from the last century called Martin Lloyd-Jones. And, and he preached a sermon called Attacked by the Devil. And the whole sermon is built around this idea that uh, if you weren't a Christian, you wouldn't be doubting. That if Satan assails you with doubt, or if he aggravates the reality of doubt with, within our own hearts then you need to appreciate that Satan is dealing with us as Christians. If you weren't a Christian, well, Satan wouldn't be tempting you to doubt a faith that you don't have. And so pastorally, for, for Lloyd-Jones at least, one of the most powerful ways to break the cycle of doubt is to realize that if I am doubting, I don't need to. 